What most people didn't know, is that helmets, will not prevent brain damage. And the reason, is very simple. The brain consists of two types of matter, each with their own density. And, when a person shakes their head, those different layers tend to move at different speeds, causing the connections in the brain to be affected. The amount of damage, is mostly determined, by how often a person shakes their head. And, also, by the severity of the shaking. And most unfortunately, a major misconception, that many people had, was that brain damage was only occurring, if they noticed a person's slurred speech, or impaired motor skills. And that lack of understanding, is one of the greatest tragedies, of the 20th century, because, brain damage, is not always noticeable, right away, or, in the way that people thought. Anyone, with even a little bit of sense, already knows, that kicking a person in the head, will cause brain damage. But what about sitting down too fast on a couch? Sorry to have to tell all you couch potatoes, but plopping down really fast with all of your weight onto a couch, is really really bad for your brain, which is rattling inside of your skull, due to the intense deceleration forces at work. So next time you sit down, do so with care, because otherwise, two types of damage will likely result. The first type, is when you plop down so hard, that your brain actually crashes into your skull. But, the second, and more common damage, happens because the different layers of your brain, move around, and the connections in your brain start to tear and rip. And that really sucks, because those connections are things like your memories, and your access to your senses and your sense of being who you are, from day to day, when you wake up. Parents might be thinking, of the playful games they do with their kids, where they throw their children onto a bed nearby, in an age-old tradition of introducing kids to gravity. Let's examine the forces at work here. When they hit the bed, they instantly decelerate. Their brains will be shaken violently, because they carry momentum from being given that energy upon being thrown. This type of playful behavior is very common and natural, for any parent to do, so don't blame yourself. You simply didn't know. We have all seen pictures of the brain. We all know that the brain looks really soft. And you can ask your doctor, what the brain is like, in terms of elasticity, and they will tell you, that the brain moves around, very similar, to jello. So, let's take a see-through container, and put some jello in it, and throw it onto the bed, and see what happens. The container stops, but the jello slams into the inside, of the container. Let's imagine, that you are holding the container, over your head, and then you jump up and down. What do you think will happen, to the jello, inside of the container? If you said, that the jello will slam into the inside of the container, then you are correct. Am I seriously going to advise you, to never throw your kids, onto the bed playfully, and to never allow them to jump up and down, on the bed, or trampolines? You bet I am. Because those actions cause damage to your child's brain, and their entire future, depends on you learning some simple facts about human anatomy. So, what about jumping rope? Okay, let's strap that container of jello to your head, and we can watch what happens to the jello as you jump rope. This is not rocket science. The brain is very easy to visualize. Any action that causes the brain to move around violently, will result in some degree of brain damage. The amount of damage, is dependent on the frequency of the shaking, or impact, and the severity of impacts, or acceleration and deceleration forces. At this point, some of you in the audience are saying, geez, why don't you just tell me to have my kid sit perfectly still in the corner and never move? I mean, how is my kid even supposed to have fun, and be a kid if he can't jump around? Listen, there are plenty of exercises, 
and other fun physical activities that don't involve jeopardizing a safe environment for the brain. Honestly, I can't force you to promote behaviors that foster a perfect condition for developing minds. I can't twist your arm and make you teach your kids about forces before they do damage to themselves. I can only point out such obvious things such as the fact that head banging is a very bad behavior at any age because it causes the layers of the brain to move around violently and if done hard enough can cause the brain to impact into the skull. Gee, Captain Buzzkill, any other activities you want us to stop doing? Yes, actually gymnastics is also very bad when you make them whip themselves around violently resulting in g-forces on their brain, which can cause intense tearing. Not to mention, the fact that many gymnasts, suffer from horrible spinal conditions, due to the impact of landing so many times, and their spines absorbing so much of that energy. The same is true, for cheerleaders, who are doing flips, and performing some of those same gymnastic moves. In martial arts some schools teach tricking, tricking, is pretty much similar to gymnastics, and the same g-forces apply to the brain and the same danger of tearing brain tissue, as well as the danger of sudden deceleration from landing quickly. Unlike gymnastics however, where they are taught to land on two feet, in martial arts tricking, they jump off of one foot, while twisting, and then land on one foot, while then twisting, to do the next move. This results in weakened ankles, and knees, and almost inevitable injuries to those joints, due to the fact that the human body's joints, are not meant to twist, while applying great pressure, such as the weight of jumping, and landing on one foot. Now, what about those of you in the audience, who say that you don't care about the consequences, because the glory of the sport and being rewarded, is much more important. How much glory? is there, when you can't remember what you did to get the trophy, because of brain damage. Can you really call it glory, if you can't walk at the age of 40, or you start exhibiting memory problems, because you played football, or did martial arts fighting? Why in the world, are we risking our children's ability, to be able to use their precious minds, 